Welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining us for Walt Whitman Birthplace Association's 202nd birthday celebration for beloved American poet Walt Whitman. My name is Caitlin Shea and I'm the Events and Media Director for Walt Whitman Birthplace Association and if you're not familiar with us just yet we are a museum located in Huntington, New York which is on Long Island and you can come visit us in person for a tour of the state historic site where Walt Whitman was born 202 years ago today, May 31st, 2021. And Walt Whitman's father, Walt Whitman Sr., built the farmhouse in 1816 upon his marriage to Walt Whitman's mother, Louisa Van Velser. And Walt was born at the New York State Historic Site in 1819, the second of nine children. I also want to take a moment to invite you to our many, many live Zoom events. You can join us live during the event. Uh, we have lots of contemporary poets joining us, uh, many scholars discussing Whitman's rich legacy. And so if you're really into poetry or you're really into history, these events are amazing. And you can interact with the poets and scholars if you come to the events live. However, if you miss an event, they're always going to be posted here on our YouTube. So I ask that you please subscribe right now. Just take a moment, click that subscribe button, and uh, turn on the notifications as well so that every time you don't get to join us for an event that we have live on Zoom, you can come back here and watch it later. And I'll also remind you, stay connected with us, please. We love meeting new people. Uh, we love bringing people together like we are for this event here today. And so please follow us on our social media. We have a Facebook, we have an Instagram, we have a Twitter. So definitely join us on that. And then you can always tag us in your post as well. We love uh, interacting on there and learning more about the people who are wit maniacs out there. So definitely do that as well. And if you're a fan and you've been to a lot of our live events, you know that I always wanna start every single event by saying thank you so, so much to everyone who's able to donate to us, especially through this difficult time that we're just sort of coming through right now. And these types of events would not be possible without your support. And your support could be something small, like a $5 donation that you might spend on a cup of Starbucks coffee, or it could be something like just coming to our events, being present, being there, uh, and watching our YouTube channel, subscribing. Every bit helps and makes us able to bring more Whitman to more people. So thank you so, so, so much for that. We really appreciate it. It means multitudes to us. All right, so we're gonna jump into our program. We have an amazing collection of artwork and video readings from all over the world to share with you today. It's truly a Whitmaniac event, let me tell you, you'll see. And special thanks to everyone who submitted. It really means a lot. Uh, this grew into something more beautiful than we could have even predicted when we were planning it. So thank you for making it so beautiful. And to start us off, we are going to have welcome remarks from Walt Whitman Birthplace Executive Director, Cynthia Shore. And she'll be reading an excerpt from There Was a Child Went Forth at the Birthplace Museum in Huntington, New York. I'm Cynthia Shore, the Executive Director of the Walt Whitman Birthplace here in Huntington, Long Island. Welcome to the Birthplace. I know many of our staff are reading today and reading from different spots, and I'm here in the Poetry Circle in our bench commemorative bench area, and uh, it brings me great joy to invite you to read your favorite poem at the Walt Whitman's birthday here at his birth site. We can walk in his steps and travel the grass that he walked when he was young. I thank all of you for the poems that you submitted. I thank our Board of Trustees for their support. We always thank Suffolk County and the Town of Huntington and Humanities New York for their support. As a small nonprofit, we rely on the generosity of our grantors and of our members and of our donors like you. So I can't wait to see the video. I can't wait to see all the wonderful poems that you've selected from across the world. And I would like to share my favorite poem with you, which is, There Was a Child Went Forth. And of course, it's about a child going forth. And I picture this Walt being a youngster, as he was here, 
two or three or four years old coming out of the doorway there at the birthplace. And this is what he had to say as a grown up about that time. There was a child went forth. There was a child went forth every day and the first object he looked upon, that object he became. And that object became part of him for the day or a certain part of the day or for many years or for stretching cycles of years. The early lilacs became a part of that child and grass and white and red morning glories and white and red clover and the song of the feeble bird and the noisy brood of the barnyard or by the mire of the pond side and the fish suspending themselves so curiously below there and the beautiful curious and the water plants with their graceful flat heads all became part of him. He goes on and on in this poem about the different things in his life becoming part of him, the trees, the roads, the people, the village. But what I hold most dear is his opening paragraph, his opening verse. He talks about the birthplace here and how it became a part of him his whole life. I invite this day to become a part of you and for you to become a part of us. I invite you to come visit us from near and far and walk in Walt's footsteps with us. Thank you for joining us today. Since the late 1800s, poets, historians, and scholars have made pilgrimages to the birthplace to celebrate Walt's birthday. And now, 202 years later, we are keeping the tradition alive virtually. This next photo is from Walt's 100th birthday in 1919. Next up we have a video from Amanda Avilas and Amanda is our 2021 film intern at the birthplace. She is doing a phenomenal job. This video that you're watching now would not be possible without all of Amanda's enthusiasm and her ideas. So thank you so much Amanda for contributing so much in your first few weeks at the birthplace. We really appreciate it. And you'll watch her wonderful film from the birthplace next. Wonderful job, Amanda. And next up, we have Whitman impersonator Daryl Blaine Ford and filmmaker H. Paul Moon's film, an excerpt from his film, Facing West. And if you'd like to see the full film, it is on our YouTube channel. I highly recommend you go look it up after this event, Facing West. And Daryl Blaine Ford has been a fan of the birthplace since the 1940s when he discovered it. And we've been so lucky to have him through the years uh, coming uh, dressed as Whitman and giving us some uplifting Whitman presence at the birthplace for our events. So thank you so much for that, Daryl. We always appreciate it and we're so happy to have you in this film. And thank you, Paul Moon. Wonderful job and we're so happy to have Facing West on our YouTube channel so so many people can enjoy it. There was a child went forth every day and the first object he looked upon that object he became. And that object became part of him for the day, or a certain part of the day, or for many years, or stretching cycles of years. The early lilacs became part of this child, and grass, and white and red morning glories, and white and red clover 
and the song of the Phoebe bird all became part of him. And our first video submission comes from Barbara Bear in Washington, D.C. And Barbara Bear is a historian with the Library of Congress. And she's been with us for so many virtual events, exploring Whitman's personal writings and his personal items. She has shown them on our YouTube. You can find these videos uh, from her previous events. And you can join us this Thursday for an event called Every Hour, Every Atom. It's a panelist discussion about Walt Whitman's personal notebooks. So I hope you can join us for that and enjoy this reading from Barbara now. Hi, I'm Barbara Bear and I'm coming to you from Washington, D.C., one of the places that Walt Whitman once lived and walked and um, loved to ramble in the woods. And I'm reading a short part of Proud Music of the Storm. We just had a huge storm pass through here in D.C. Give me to hold all sounds, I madly struggling cry. Fill me with all the voices of the universe. Endow me with their throbbings, natures also. The tempests, waters, winds, operas and chants, marches and dances, utter, pour in, for I would take them all. Thank you so much, Barbara. And next up, we have Walt Whitman Birthplace Association Board Trustee Secretary, Maria Basil. And Maria will be coming to us from East Setauket, New York, reading Song of Myself, verse two. Then we'll hear from Long Island poet, Barbara Branca, who will be reading On the Beach at Night Alone from Leaves of Grass. And she'll be joining us for another Zoom event, uh, Walking with Whitman open mic in November. So be on the lookout for that event. And then we will have Linda Olsheka Brenner sharing with us from Chicago, Illinois. She has three beautiful photos of uh, the inside of flowers, a great zoom in, and the photos are titled Arising, Undeniable, and Passions. Song of Myself, Section 2. Houses and rooms are full of perfumes. The shelves are crowded with perfumes. I breathe the fragrance myself and know it and like it. The distillation would intoxicate me also, but I shall not let it. The atmosphere is not a perfume. It has no taste of the distillation. It is odorless. It is for my mouth forever. I am in love with it. I will go to the bank by the wood and become undisguised and naked. I am mad for it to be in contact with me. The smoke of my own breath, echoes, ripples, buzzed whispers, love root silk thread, crotch and vine. My respiration and inspiration, the beating of my heart, the passing of blood and air through my lungs, the sniff of green leaves and dry leaves and of the shore and dark colored sea rocks and of hay in the barn. The sound of the belched words of my voice loose to the eddies of the wind. A few light kisses, a few embraces, the reaching around of arms. The play of shine and shade on the trees as the supple bows wag. The delight alone, or in the rush of streets, or along the fields and hillsides. The feeling of health, the full noon trill, the song of me rising from bed and meeting the sun. Have you reckoned a thousand acres much? Have you reckoned the earth much? Have you practiced so long to learn to read? Have you felt so proud to get at the meaning of poems? Stop this day and night with me and you shall possess the origin of all poems. You shall possess the good of the earth 
and sun. There are millions of suns left. You shall no longer take things at second or third hand, nor look through the eyes of the dead, nor feed on the specters in books. You shall not look through my eyes either, nor take things from me. You shall listen to all sides and filter them from yourself. I'm Barbara Ann Branca, and we're at the Wading River Beach on Long Island Sound. Here is from Leaves of Grass on the beach at night alone, 1856. On the beach at night alone, as the old mother sways her to and fro, singing her husky song, as I watch the bright stars shining, I think a thought of the cleft of the universes and of all the future. A vast similitude interlocks all. All spheres grown, ungrown, small, large, suns, moons, planets. All distances of place, however wide. All distances of time, all inanimate forms. All souls, all living bodies, though they be ever so different or in different worlds. All gaseous, watery, vegetable, mineral processes, the fishes, the brutes, all nations, colors, barbarism, civilizations, languages, all identities that have existed or may exist on this globe or any globe, all lives and deaths, all of the past, present, future. This vast similitude spans them and always has spanned and shall forever span them and compactly hold and enclose them. All right, two very powerful readings and we got to peer into some little universes there in those flower photos. And up next, we're gonna to travel to Germany and we have Frank Brockman reading Song of the Open Road, verse nine at Lake Talking, Upper Bavaria with Burstengaden Alps. I know I butchered that, but I definitely tried to say it right. Uh, and Frank has been friends with us on Instagram since 2020. So we're so glad to see you here too, Frank. And after Frank, we are going to see a painting inspired by I Sing the Body Electric from Kevin Casey, very electrifying painting. And then we will travel to Annapolis, Maryland and see Grace Cavalieri's mixed media painting entitled Sons of Meaning, inspired by Leaves of Grass. Hallo, wer immer du seist, komm, reise mit mir. Reise mit mir, so findest du, was nie ermüdet. Die Erde ermüdet nie. Die Erde ist rau, schweigsam, unverständlich zuerst. Natur ist rau und unverständlich zuerst. Verliere den Mut nicht, halt aus. Göttliche Dinge gibt es wohl verborgen. Ich schwöre dir, Göttliche Dinge gibt es schöner, als Worte zu sagen vermögen. Allons, hier dürfen wir nicht verweilen. Wie lieblich auch immer diese gefüllten Läden, wie behaglich auch immer dies Heim. Hier können wir nicht bleiben. Wie geschützt dieser Hafen auch und still diese Wasser. 
hier dürfen wir nicht ankern. Wie lieb auch die Gastlichkeit, die uns umgibt, wir dürfen sie nur eine kleine Weile genießen. Die Erde ist rau, schweigsam, unverständlich zuerst. Natur ist rau und unverständlich zuerst. Verliere den Mut nicht, halt aus. Göttliche Dinge gibt es wohl Ich schwöre verborgen. dir, göttliche Dinge gibt ich schwöre es dir, schöner als Worte Dinge zu sagen vermögen. Schöner als Worte zu sagen vermögen. Hier dürfen wir nicht verweilen. Wie lieblich auch immer diese gefüllten Leben. Wie behaglich auch immer dies Heim. Hier können wir nicht bleiben. Wie geschützt, Wie geschützt dieser, dieser Hafen, Hafen auch und still, auch und diese, still Wasser. diese Wasser. Hier dürfen, Hier wir, dürfen nicht wir nicht ankern. ankern. Wie lieb auch die Verliere Gastlichkeit, die uns halt umgibt. Aus. Wir dürfen sie nur eine kleine Weile verborgen. genießen. Verliere den Mut nicht, halt aus, göttliche Dinge gibt es wohl verborgen. Verliere ich den schwöre Mut nicht, dir, halt göttliche aus, göttliche Dinge gibt es, Dinge gibt es schöner wohl verborgen. als Worte zu sagen vermögen. Right. And you can see so much work goes into all of these submissions. It's really, really a beautiful thing. So thank you so much for submitting those. So powerful. All right. So next up, we will be hearing from Rosaline Crowley from Zionsville, Indiana, who submitted a poem and painting called Deja Vu. Then we have Sally Dawidoff from New York City. She films her video at Camp Walt Whitman in Piermont, New Hampshire and she will read The Mystic Trumpeter. And then we will hear from Karen DeMaro from Seacliff, New York, reading There Was a Child Went Forth. And Karen is the artistic director at the Acting Center in New York City, and she has joined us both in person and virtually to teach workshops in performing poetry. And she'll have a program with us about combining poetry and imagery together in artwork soon, so be on the lookout for that. I scent the grass, the moist air, and the roses. Thy song expands my numbed, embonded spirit. Thou freest, launchest me, floating and basking upon heaven's lake. There was a child went forth every day, and the first object he looked upon and received with wonder, or pity, or love, or dread, that object he became. And that object became part of him for the day, or a certain part of the day, or for many years, or stretching cycles of years. The early lilacs became part of his child, and grass, and white and red morning glories, and white and red clover, and the song of the Phoebe bird, and the March barn lambs, and the sow's pink faint litter, and the mare's foal, and the cow's calf, and the noisy brood of the barnyard, or by the mire of the pond side, and the fish suspending themselves so curiously below there, and the beautiful, curious liquid, and the water plants with their graceful flat heads all became part of him, and the field sprouts of April and May became part of him, winter grain sprouts, and those of the light yellow corn, and of the esculent roots of the garden, and the apple trees covered with blossoms, and the fruit afterward, and woodberries, and the commonest Weeds by the road. All right, and all three of those submissions were very inspired by nature, which is something that 
what women would absolutely appreciate. And next up, we're going to look at a painting submitted by Emily Eisen entitled Autumn Trail from Northport, New York. And she was inspired by the Whitman quote, the press of my foot to the earth brings a hundred affections. Then we will look at work from Leonardo the Fabulous. He's an artist here in Long Island, New York. And he submitted a pointillism illustration of Abraham Lincoln. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with O Captain, My Captain, but if you're interested in learning more about the Whitman-Lincoln connection uh, and Whitman's many, many public speeches about Lincoln after he was assassinated, his love for Lincoln, you can check out a video we have with David Reynolds, who wrote a book about Lincoln, uh, and Barbara Baer from the Library of Congress. And that's on our YouTube channel. So definitely look into that if you're interested in Lincoln and Whitman's wonderful connection. And then we will have a video submitted uh, from Jack Feldstein and Walt Whitman Birthplace Association writer in residence, George Wallace. And of course, George Wallace brings us these wonderful programs called Walking with Whitman. They're now virtual, so you can also go to our YouTube channel and check those out. Uh, they are amazing. He brings us the best poets from both near and far, international and local. Um, and for 11 years now, he has been doing that. So bravo to George. And of course, uh, his readings are tremendous. So look forward to hearing that one. Manahata by Walt Whitman. I was asking for something specific and perfect for my city, whereupon lo, up sprang the aboriginal name. Now I see what there is in the name, a word, liquid, sane, unruly, musical, self-sufficient. I see that the word of my city is that word up there because I see that word nested in nests of water bays, superb with tall and wonderful spires, rich, hemmed thick all around with sail ships and steamships. An island 16 miles long, solemn founded, numberless crowded streets, high growths of iron, slender, strong light, splendidly uprising toward clear skies, tide swift and ample, well loved by me toward sundown, the flowing sea currents, the little islands, larger adjoining islands, the heights, the villas, the countless masts, the white shore steamers, the lighters, the ferry boats, the black sea steamers well modeled, the downtown streets, the jobbers, houses of business, the houses of business of the ship merchants and money brokers. The river streets, immigrants arriving, 15, 20,000 a week, the carts hauling goods, the manly race of drivers of horses, the brown-faced sailors, the summer air, the bright sun shining, and the sailing clouds aloft, the winter snows, the sleigh bells, off the broken ice in the river, passing along up or down with the flood tide or ebb tide, the mechanics of the city, the masters, well-formed beautiful faced, looking you straight in the eyes. Trottoirs thronged, the vehicles, Broadway, the women, the shops and shows, the parades, processions, bugles playing, flags flying, drums beating, a million people, manners free and superb, open voices, hospitality, the most courageous and friendly young men of the free city. No slaves, no owners of slaves. A beautiful city the city of hurried and sparkling waters, the city of spires and masts, the city nested in bays, my city, the city of such women, I am mad to be with them, I will return after death to be with them, the city of such young men, I swear I cannot live happy without I often go, talk, walk, eat, drink, sleep with them.
And it's incredible to see the visual imagery that Wall women can also inspire, not just words, but also powerful uh, images and animations, as we just saw. All right, and up next, we travel to Eugene, Oregon, and Scott Fleming will be reading The World Below the Brine from the Sea Drift section of Leaves of Grass. And then we'll travel to Merrick, New York, and see Gloria Forte's oil painting called Shadows Will Fall Behind You. And it's a very realistic painting inspired by a photo of Walt Whitman in his old age when he was living in Camden, New Jersey. Uh, he would have his papers all piled high around him. He was a collector, all of his notes uh, he left behind. He kept them for all the years that he was alive. Uh, a lot of them are at the Library of Congress now. And then we'll hear from Madeline Fox in Huntington, New York, and her recording of page 17 of Leaves of Grass. And Madeline attends all of our Zoom events live, so it's wonderful to see you here too, Madeline. Thank you. The world below the brine, forests at the bottom of the sea, the branches and leaves, Sea lettuce, vast lichens, strange flowers and seeds, the thick tangle, openings in pink turf, different colors, pale gray and green, purple, white, and gold, the play of light through the water. Dumb swimmers there among the rocks, coral, gluten, grass, rushes, and the element of the swimmers. Sluggish existences grazing there suspended are slowly crawling close to the bottom. The sperm whale at the surface blowing air and spray or disporting with its flukes. The leaden-eyed shark, the walrus, the turtle, the hairy sea leopard and the stingray. Passions there, wars, pursuits, tribes, sight in those ocean depths, breathing that thick breathing air as so many do. The change thence to the sight here and to the subtle air breathed by beings like us who walk this sphere. The change onward from ours to that of beings who walk other spheres. Shut not your doors to me, proud libraries. For that which was lacking among you all, yet needed most, I bring a book. I have made for you, dear sake, all soldiers, and for you, all soul, soul of man, and you, love of comrades, the words of my book mean nothing, the life of it, everything. Beautiful readings and beautiful painting. Thank you. Up next, we will hear from Sandra Goloff in Massapequa, New York, and see her painting, Sunflowers in a Vase, which was inspired by Leaves of Grass, and maybe inspired by Van Gogh a little bit too. And after Sandra, we will travel to Hempstead, New York, and hear from Valerie Griggs inside a classroom at Malloy College. And she is reading section one of Starting from Pominock. And after Valerie, we will hear from Walt Whitman Birthplace Association bookkeeper, Michelle Gonzalez, and see a visual illustration of Who Learns My Lesson Complete by Michelle's daughter, Gianna Gonzalez. Hi, I'm Valerie Griggs, and I'm reading the first section of Starting from Pominock by Walt Whitman. Starting from fish-shaped Pominock, 
where I was born, well begotten and raised by a perfect mother. After roaming many lands, lover of populous pavements, dweller in Manhattan, my city, or on southern savannas, or a soldier camped, or carrying my knapsack and gun, or a miner in California, or rude in my Dakota's woods, my diet meat, my drink from the spring, or withdrawn to muse and meditate in some deep recess, far from the clank of crowds, intervals passing wrapped and happy, aware of the fresh free giver, the flowing Missouri, aware of mighty Niagara, aware of the buffalo herds grazing the plains, the hirsute and strong-breasted bull of earth, rocks, fifth-month flowers experienced, stars, rain, snow, my maze, having studied the mockingbird's tones and the flight of the mountain hawk, and heard at dusk the unrivaled one, the hermit thrush from the swamp cedars, solitary, singing in the west, I strike up for a new world. My name is Michelle from Northport, New York, and I'm going to be reading a portion of Who Learns My Lesson Complete. I'm here with my daughter, Gianna, who will be sharing her artwork. I lie abstracted and hear beautiful tales of things and the reasons of things. They are so beautiful, I nudge myself to listen. I cannot say to any person what I hear. I cannot say it to myself. It is very wonderful. It is no little matter, this round and delicious globe, moving so exactly in its orbit, forever and ever, without one jolt or the untruth of a single second. I do not think it was made in six days, nor in 10,000 years, nor 10 decillions of years, nor planned and built one thing after another as an architect plans and builds a house. I do not think 70 years is the time of a man or woman, nor that 70 millions of years is the time of a man or woman, nor that years will ever stop the existence of me or anyone else. Is it wonderful that I should be immortal? As everyone is immortal. I know it is wonderful, but my eyesight is equally wonderful and how I was conceived in my mother's womb is equally wonderful, and how I was not palpable once, but am now, and was born on the last day of May, 1819, and passed from a babe in the creeping trance of three summers and three winters to articulate and walk are all equally wonderful, and that I grew six feet high and that I have become a man 36 years old in 1855, and that I am here anyhow, are all equally wonderful, and that my soul embraces you this hour, and we affect each other without ever seeing each other, and never perhaps to see each other, is every bit as wonderful. Absolutely incredible work we're seeing, amazing, far and above what we imagined this opportunity would bring us. I mean, you're just, you're impressing us so much with all of these readings, with all of these images, with these animations, incredible work. All right, that being said, let's move on to Sweden now. We have a video reading from Matthias Jansen from Eyer Cup, Sweden. And Matthias is reading As I Pondered in Silence. And he also submitted a great digital collage titled Self-Portrait of Myself, all the way from Sweden. And then we will travel back to Huntington, New York to hear from Walt Whitman Birthplace Association Tour Guide Supervisor, Iris Jumper. 
and Iris will be reading the Whitman elegy poem for Abraham Lincoln entitled When Lilacs Last in a Dooryard Bloomed and she's right on the porch there of the house and next to the porch area is a lilac tree that is believed to have been there when Walt Whitman visited the house as an adult and we always think of this poem being just very connected to that experience of those lilacs being there when he visited. And then we will travel all the way to Santa Clarita, California to hear from Diggy Cat. And Diggy Cat is reading Europe, the 72nd and 73rd years of these states. As I pondered in silence, returning upon my poems, considering lingering long, a phantom arose before me with distrustful aspect. Terrible in beauty, age and power, the genius of poets of old lands, as to me directing like flame its eyes, with finger pointing to many mortal songs, and menacing voice, what singest thou? it said, No, still not there is but one theme for every enduring barge, and that is the theme form the fortune of battles, the making of perfect soldiers. Be it so, then I answered, I to hold the shade also sing war, and a longer and greater one than any, weighed in my book with varying fortune, with flight, advance, and retreat, victory deferred and wavering. Yet methinks certain, or good as certain at last, the feel the word, for life and death, for the body and the eternal soul, lo, I too am come, chanting the chant of battles. I above all promote brave soldiers. Okay. When lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed. When lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed and the great star early drooped in the western sky in the night, I mourn and yet shall mourn with ever returning spring. Ever returning spring, Trinity, sure to be, to me you bring. Lilacs blooming, perennial, and drooping star in the west, and thought of him I love. This is Diggy Cat reading Europe, the 72nd and 73rd years of these states by Walt Whitman. Suddenly, out of its stale and drowsy layer, the layer of slaves, like lightning, Europe leapt forth, half startled at itself. Its feet upon the ashes and the rags, its hands tied to the throats of kings. O oh, hope and faith, or aching close of lives, or many a sickened heart, turn back unto this day and making yourselves afresh. And you, paid to defile the people, you liars mark, not for numberless agonies, murders, lust, for counting thieving in its manifold mean forms, worming from his simplicity the poor man's wages. For many a promise sworn by royal lips and broken and laughed at in the breaking, then in their power, not for all these did the blow strike of personal revenge or the heads of the nobles fall. The people scorn the ferocity of kings. But the sweetness of mercy brewed bitter destruction and the frightened rulers come back. Each comes in state with his train, hangman, priest, and tax gatherer, soldier, lawyer, jailer, and sycophant. Yet behold, although a shape vague as the night draped interminably, head, front, and form in scarlet folds, whose face and eyes none may see. Out of its robes, only this, the red robes lifted by the arm, one finger pointed high over the top like the head of a snake appears. Meanwhile, corpses lie in the new-made graves, bloody corpses of young men. The rope of the gibbet hangs heavily, the bullets of princes are flying, the creatures of power laugh aloud, and all these things bear fruit, and they are good. These corpses of young men, those martyrs that hang from the gibbets, those hearts pierced by the gray lead, cold and motionless as they seem, live elsewhere with unslaughtered vitality. They live in other young men, O oh kings. They live in brothers, again ready to defy you. They were purified by death. They were taught and exalted. Not a grave of the murder for freedom, but grow seed for freedom in its turn to bear seed. Which the winds carry afar and re-sow, and the rains and the snows nourish. 
Not a dismembered spirit can the weapons of tyrants let loose, but it stalks invisibly over the earth, whispering, counseling, cautioning. Liberty let others despair of you. I never despaired of you. Is this house shut? Is the master away? Nevertheless, be ready. Be not wary of watching. He will return soon. His messengers coming on. All right, a lot of wonderful work here. And up next, we will travel to Lubbock, Texas to see Abby Kleppa's sculptures. There's a bust of Whitman inspired by the inside cover photo of Whitman in Leaves of Grass, where he has his hand on his hip and his head tilted, and he's dressed like a carpenter. And she also submitted a mug that was created during the Texas Tech University's Celebrating Whitman Symposium. Amazing work. And then we'll travel to Worcestershire, England, to hear from Nina Lewis. And Nina has been joining us on Zoom for events for a long time. She's read at some of our open mics, and she'll be hosting a workshop with us uh, in August. So keep your eyes out for that. And she also submitted a Walt Whitman text collage. Uh, it's amazing. And one of the quotes she used in it is, I loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a spear of grass. And you're going to want to have that in mind when we move to Richmond, Virginia to see photographs from Toma, Thomas J. McDonald. Uh, and they were inspired by leaves of grass. And you'll see why once you see these photos. To rich givers. What you give me, I cheerfully accept. A little sustenance, a hut and garden, a little money, as I rendezvous with my poems. A traveller's lodging and breakfast, as journey through the states. Why should I be ashamed to own such gifts? Why to advertise for them? For I myself, I'm not one who bestows nothing upon man and woman. For I bestow upon any man or woman the entrance to all the gifts of the universe. incredible work and next up we will travel to Rockford Illinois to hear from Logan Mathis who will be reading Hushed Be the Camps Today and that's a poem that's reflecting on the soldiers mourning the loss of Abraham Lincoln after he was assassinated and it is very appropriate for today Memorial Day here in the US and then we will travel to Owen Ahincha, West Cork Ireland to hear from Afric McGlinchey, who is actually a poet that we featured during Walking with Whitman recently, also on our YouTube if you want to look that up. Um, she's a very amazing reading, and she will be reading Out of the Cradle Endlessly Rocking with a beautiful video that her son Keon Hamilton created, and he has a production company called Lost Film Studios. And then we will travel to Miami, Florida, see a woodcut portrait of Walt Whitman and a photo transfer titled Walt and his Butterflies and those are from Alberto Meza. Let's check those out. Hi, my name is Logan Mathis reading to you from the land of Lincoln, specifically Rockford, Illinois, and today I'm going to be reading an elegy that Whitman wrote for Abraham Lincoln after he passed. It's called Hushed Be the Camps Today. Hushed be the camps today, 
and soldiers let us drape our war-worn weapons, and each with musing soul retire to celebrate our dear commander's death. No more for him life's stormy conflicts, nor victory, nor defeat. No more time's dark events, charging like ceaseless clouds across the sky. But sing, poet, in our name. Sing of the love we bore him, because you, dweller in camps, know it truly. As they invault the coffin there, sing, as they close the doors of earth upon him, one verse, with the heavy hearts of soldiers. Thank you. Over the hoarse surging of the sea, or flitting from briar to briar by day, I saw, I heard at intervals, the remaining one, the he bird, the solitary guest from Alabama. Blow, 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 blow up sea winds along Pomonic's shore. I wait and I wait till you blow my mate to me. Yes, when the stars glistened all night long on the prong of a moss-scalloped stake, down almost amid the slapping waves sat the lone singer, wonderful, causing tears. He called on his mate. He poured forth the meaning which I of all men know. Yes, my brother, I know. The rest might not, but I have treasured every note from more than once, dimly down to the beach, gliding, silent, avoiding the moonbeams, blending myself with the shadows, recalling now the obscure shapes, the echoes, the sounds and sights after their sorts, the white arms out in the breakers, tirelessly tossing, I with bare feet, a child, the wind wafting my hair, listened long, long, listened to keep, to sing, now translating the notes, following you, my brother, soothe, 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 close on its wave, soothes the wave behind, and again another behind, embracing and lapping every one close, but my love soothes not me, not to me. Low hangs the moon, it rose late, it is lagging, oh I think it is heavy with love, with love. Wonderful job. And up next, we have a brand new video from H. Paul Moon. It was filmed in northeastern Nevada, and Ed Begley will read Song of the Open Road over H. Paul Moon's beautiful video. And after that, we will travel to Northport, New York again, and we will hear from Cheryl G. Murphy, who will read Grand is the Scene. And then we will visit Eisenhower Park, which is in East Meadow, New York, to hear Marsha M. Nelson read two verses from I Sing the Body Electric. Afoot and lighthearted, I take to the open road. Healthy, free, the world before me, the long brown path before me leading wherever I choose. Henceforth I ask not good fortune, I myself am good fortune. Henceforth I whimper no more, postpone no more, need nothing. Done with indoor complaints, libraries, querulous criticisms. Strong and content, I travel the open road. The earth, that is sufficient. I do not want the constellations any nearer. I know they are very well where they are. I know they suffice for those who belong to them. You road, I enter upon and look around. I believe you are not all that is here. I believe that much unseen is also here. 
Here, the profound lesson of reception. Nor preference, nor denial. The black with his woolly head, the felon, the diseased, the illiterate person are not denied. The birth, the hasting after the physician, the beggar's tramp, the drunkard stagger, the laughing party of mechanics, the escaped youth, the rich person's carriage, the fop, the eloping couple, the early market man, the hearse, the moving of furniture into the town, the return back from the town, they pass. I also pass. Anything passes. None can be interdicted. None but are accepted. None but shall be dear to me. Alone, whoever you are, come travel with me. Traveling with me, you find what never tires. The earth never tires. The earth is rude, silent, incomprehensible at first. Nature is rude and incomprehensible at first. Be not discouraged. Keep on. There are divine things well enveloped. I swear to you, there are divine things more beautiful than words can tell. Hello, we must not stop here. However sweet these laid up stores, however convenient this dwelling, we cannot remain here. However sheltered this port, and however calm these waters, we must not anchor here. However welcome the hospitality that surrounds us, we are permitted to receive it but a little while. Along the road is before us. It is safe. I have tried it. My own feet have tried it well. Be not detained. Let the paper remain on the desk unwritten and the book on the shelf unopened. Let the tools remain in the workshop. Let the money remain unearned. Let the school stand. Mind not the cry of the teacher. Let the preacher preach in his pulpit. Let the lawyer plead in the court and the judge expound the law. Camarado, I give you my hand. I give you my love more precious than money. I give you myself before preaching or law. Will you give me yourself? Will you come travel with me? Shall we stick by each other as long as we live? Grand is the scene, the light to me. Grand are the sky and stars. Grand is the earth, and grand our lasting time and space. And grand their laws, so multiform. Puzzling, evolutionary, but grander far, the unseen soul of me. Comprehending, endowing all those, lighting the light, the sky and stars. Delving the earth, sailing the sea. What are all those indeed without the unseen soul? Of what amount without thee? More evolutionary, vast, puzzling, O oh my soul, more multiform, far more lasting, thee than they. Hello. I'm reading two verses of I Sing the Body Electric by Walt Whitman. I sing the body electric, the armies of those I love engirth me and I engirth them. They will not let me off till I go with them, respond to them and disrupt them and charge them full with the charge of the soul. Was it doubted that those who corrupt their own bodies conceal themselves? And if those who defile the living are as bad as those who defile the dead? And if the body does not do fully as much as the soul? And if this body were not the soul, what is the soul? The love of the body of man or woman balks account. The body itself balks account. 
That of the male is perfect, and that of the female is perfect. The expression of the face walks a kind, but the expression of a well-made man appears not only in his face, it is in his limbs and joints also. It is curiously in the joints of his hips and wrists. It is in his walk, the carriage of his neck, the flex of his waist and knees. Dress does not hide him. The strong, sweet quality he strikes through the cotton and broth cloth. To see him pass conveys as much as the best poem, perhaps more. You linger to see his back and the back of his neck and shoulder side. Thank you. All right, some very powerful readings there too. Absolutely. All right, so let's get into some more readings. Next we will travel to West Cork, Ireland, hear from Margaret O'Driscoll, who will be reading verse 14 of Song of Myself. Then we'll travel back to Huntington, New York, to see a mural, an amazing mural, created by Victoria Pascrell, and it has the Walt Levin quote, I believe a leaf of grass is no less than the journey work of the stars. Beautiful. And then we will travel to Grand Park in Hewlett, New York to see 2020 Walt Women Birthplace Association Long Island Poet of the Year, Christina M. Rao. And Christina has had workshops with us uh, here on our YouTube. You can tune into those, they're amazing. And she does work for us behind the scenes here too. She's a wonderful poet of the year, even in 2021. And she'll be reading from Song of Myself, section five. The wild gander leads his flock through the cool night. Ya honk, he says, and sounds it down to me like an invitation. The part may suppose it meaningless, but I listen closer. I find its purpose and place up there toward the November sky. The sharp-footed moose of the north, the cat on the house hill, the chickadee, the prairie dog, the litter of the grunting sow as they tug at her teeth, the brood of the turkey hen, and she with her half-spread wings. I see in them, and myself, the same old law. The press of my foot to the earth springs a hundred affections. They scorn the best I can do to relate them. I am enamoured of growing outdoors, of men that live among cattle and taste of the ocean or woods, of the builders and steers of ships, of the wielders of axes and mauls, of the drivers of horses, I can eat and sleep with them, week in and week out. What is commonest and cheapest and nearest and easiest is me. Me going in for my chances, spending for vast returns, adoring myself to bestow myself on the first that will take me, not asking the sky to come down to my goodwill, scattering it freely forever. I believe in you, my soul. The other I am must not abase itself to you, and you must not be abased to the other. Loaf with me on the grass, loose the stop from your throat. Not words, not music or rhyme I want, not custom or lecture, not even the best, only the lull I like, the hum of your valved voice. I mind how once we lay such a transparent summer morning, how you settled your head athwart my hips and gently turned it over upon me and parted the shirt from my bosom bone and plunged your tongue to my bare stripped heart and reached till you felt my beard and reached till you held my feet. Swiftly arose and spread around me the peace and knowledge that pass all the argument of the earth. 
and I know that the hand of God is the promise of my own, and I know that the Spirit of God is the brother of my own, and that all the men ever born are also my brothers, and the women my sisters and lovers, and that a Kelson of the creation is love, and limitless are leaves stiff or drooping in the fields. All right, some more incredible work there. And now we will visit Chicago, Illinois to hear Kim Reed reading Song of Myself 46. Then we will travel back to Long Island to Port Jefferson Harbor, New York to hear Andrew Rimby reading Of Him I Loved Day and Night from the 1860 edition. And Andrew is a PhD candidate studying Whitman at Stony Brook University. And there are several outdoor walking tours that he has taken us on. Uh, he's out there with his camera on Zoom and bringing us to all these wonderful places like Jane's Hill. So if you wanna check those out, those, are, those videos are on our YouTube. And we have an upcoming event on June 20th with Andrew touring the William Cullen Bryan estate. So definitely look into joining us for that one. And then we're going to go to Babylon, New York to see Long Island poet Rusty Rose. And Rusty is very active in the poetry community. She read for us during a Pride Month event. Uh, she read to us about the Stonewall Riots. And she'll be reading I Sing the Body Electric for us today. Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman, Song of Myself, 46. I know I have the best of time and space and was never measured and will never be measured. I tramp a perpetual journey. Come, listen all. Signs are rainproof coat, good shoes, and a staff cut from the woods. No friend of mine takes his ease in my chair. I have no chair, no church, no philosophy. I lead no man to a dinner table, library, exchange, but each man and each woman of you, I lead upon a knoll, my left hand hooking you round the waist, my right hand pointing to landscapes of continents and the public road. Not I, not anyone else can travel that road for you. You must travel it for yourself. It is not far. It is within reach. Perhaps you have been on it since you were born and did not know. Perhaps it is everywhere on water and on land. Shoulder your duds, dear son, and I will mine, and let us hasten forth. Wonderful cities and free nations we shall fetch as we go. If you tire, give me both burdens and rest the chuff of your hand on my hip, and in due time you shall repay the same service to me. For after we start, we shall never lie by again. This day before dawn, I ascended a hill and looked at the crowded heaven. And I said to my spirit, when we become the enfolders of those orbs and the pleasure and knowledge of everything in them, shall we be filled and satisfied then? And my spirit said, no, we but level that lift to pass and continue beyond. You are also asking me questions and I hear you. I answer that I cannot answer. You must find out for yourself. Sit for a while, dear son. Here are biscuits to eat and here is milk to drink. But as soon as you sleep and renew yourself in sweet clothes, I kiss you with a goodbye kiss and open the gate for your egress hence. Long enough have you dreamed contemptible dreams. Now I wash the gum from your eyes. You must habit yourself to the dazzle of the light and of every moment of your life. Long have you timidly waited, holding a plank by the shore. Now I will you to be a bold swimmer, to jump off in the midst of the sea. Rise again, nod to me, shout, and laughingly dash with your hair. Hi, this is Andrew Rinby. I am recording from Port Jefferson Harbor. I'm reading Of Him I Love Day and Night from the 1860 Leaves of Grass. And I'm also wearing my Whitman Bicentennial shirt. So Whitman is around. Of him I love day and night. I dreamed I heard he was dead. 
And I dreamed I went where they had buried him I love, but he was not in that place. And I dreamed I wandered, searching among burial places to find him. And I found that every place was a burial place. The houses full of life were equally full of death. This house is now. The streets, the shipping, the places of amusement, the Chicago, Boston, Philadelphia, the Manhattan, were as full of the dead as of the living. And fuller, oh vastly fuller, of the dead than of the living. And what I dreamed I will henceforth tell to every person and age. And I stand henceforth bound to what I dreamed. And now I am willing to disregard burial places and dispense with them. And if the memorials of the dead were put up indifferently everywhere, even in the room where I eat or sleep, I should be satisfied. And if the corpse of anyone I love, or if my own corpse be duly rendered to powder and poured in the sea, I shall be satisfied. Or if it be distributed to the winds, I shall be satisfied. Happy birthday, Whitman. I sing the body electric. I sing the body electric. The armies of those I love engirth me, and I engirt them. They will not let me off till I go with them, respond to them, and discorrupt them, and charge them full with the charge of the soul. Happy 202nd birthday, all women, from poet and Stonewall pioneer, Rita Rusty Rose. Right. Beautiful job, everyone. And up next, we will travel to West Islip, New York, to hear from Walt Whitman Birthplace Association Board Trustee Robert Savino. And Robert will be reading Dirge for Two Veterans, which is perfect for Memorial Day here in the U.S. And then we will travel to Crab Meadow Beach in Northport, New York, where I will read World Beneath the Brine. And I'll also show you a gouache painting that I created called I Contain Multitudes that Friends of the Birthplace Walt Women Initiative, uh, they're located in Brooklyn, New York, actually used it for their Song of Myself Marathon poster, which is super exciting. And that will be taking place in June, so you should definitely check that out. Uh, that will also be available on YouTube. And after that, I will show you a bicentennial birthday poster that I created for Walt Women's 200th birthday celebration. It is a painting in watercolor of the photograph of Whitman with his finger in the air with a butterfly landing and perching there. Uh, many people thought the butterfly was real. Later on, it was discovered that it was actually an Easter greeting card that had a metal ring on it. So it looked like it was perching there in the photo. And Whitman was absolutely known for being very great at marketing himself. It's a talent, really, that he had. So that I'm very inspired by that image. It's also a very beautiful image. And if you're interested in purchasing that poster, uh, there are limited edition signed posters in our gift shop, both online and in person. So you might want to check those out as well. All right, let's take a look. Good day. I'm Robert Savino, former Suffolk County Poet Laureate, and I've taken a spot in nature at Gardner's Park in West Bayshore on Whitman's Pomenade to celebrate Walt's birthday. But not with a nature poem, but with Whitman's tribute to lost soldiers to additionally remember Memorial Day and those who have given our, their lives for our freedom. The poem, Dirge for Two Veterans. The last sunbeam lightly falls from the finished Sabbath on the pavement here, and there beyond it is looking down a new-made double grave. Lo, the moon ascending up from the east, the silvery round moon, beautiful over the housetops, ghastly phantom moon, immense and silent moon. I see a sad procession and I hear the sound of coming full key bugles. All the channels of the city streets, they're flooding as with voices and with tears. I hear the great drums pounding and the small drums steady whirring. And every blow of the great convulsive drums 
strikes me through and through. For the son is brought with the father. In the foremost ranks of the fierce assault they fell. Two veterans, son and father, dropped together, and the double grave awaits them. Now nearer blow the bugles, and the drums strike more convulsive, and the daylight o'er the pavement quite has faded, and the strong dead march enwraps me. In the eastern sky up buoying, the sorrowful vast phantom moves illumined. To some mother's large transparent face, in heaven brighter growing. O oh, strong dead march, you please me. O oh, moon immense with your silvery face, you soothe me. O oh, my soldiers twain, O oh, my veterans passing to burial. What I have, I also give you. The moon gives you light, and the bugles and the drums give you music. And my heart, O oh, my soldiers, my veterans, my heart gives you love. Hi everyone, this is Kayla Che, Walt Whitman Birthplace Association Events and Media Director, coming to you from Northport, New York, at Crab Meadow Beach. I'm reading for you The World Below the Brine. The World Below the Brine. Forests at the bottom of the sea, the branches and leaves, sea lettuce, vast lichens, strange flowers and seeds, the thick tangle openings and pink turf, different colors, pale gray and green, purple, white and gold, the play of light through the water. Dumb swimmers there among the rocks, coral, gluten, grass, rushes, and the element of the swimmers. Sluggish existences, grazing there, suspended, or slowly crawling close to the bottom. The sperm whale at the surface, blowing air and spray, or disporting with his flukes. The leaden-eyed shark, the walrus, the turtle, the hairy sea leopard, and the stingray. Passions there. Wars, pursuits, tribes, sight in those ocean depths, breathing that thick, breathing air as so many do. The change thence to the sight here and to the subtle air breathed by all beings like us who walk this sphere. The change onward from ours to that of beings who walk other spheres. And I just want to quickly show you my favorite uh, shirt that isn't actually of Whitman, but reminds me of Whitman. And it says, big or small, be kind to them all. I think Whitman would appreciate that sentiment. Thank you so much. All right, and next up, we will travel to Huntington Station, New York, to visit Emily Sue Sloan, who is a wonderful Long Island poet that has participated in our open mics virtually before. And she will be reading Miracles. Then we'll travel back to Walt Women Birthplace to hear from gift shop attendant Jack Sarah. And Jack will be reading for us Crossing Brooklyn Ferry and he's reading to us from the kitchen of the birthplace house. And then we will travel to Leeds, West Yorkshire, North England to hear from Rami Smith. And Rami performed with us during Walking with Whitman recently. And you can view that recording of that event on our YouTube as well. And Rami will be reading from page 743 of the Penguin Classics edition of Walt Whitman, The Complete Poems. Let's listen into that. Miracles. Why, who makes much of a miracle? As to me, I know of nothing else but miracles. Whether I walk the streets of Manhattan or dart my sight over the roofs of houses toward the sky, 
or wade with naked feet along the beach, just in the edge of the water, or stand under trees in the woods, or talk by day with anyone I love, or sleep in the bed at night with anyone I love, or sit at table at dinner with the rest, or look at strangers opposite me riding in the car, or watch honeybees busy around the hive of a summer forenoon, or animals feeding in the fields, or birds, or the wonderfulness of insects in the air, or the wonderfulness of the sundown, or of stars shining so quiet and bright, or the exquisite, delicate, thin curve of the new moon in spring. These with the rest, one and all, are to me miracles, the whole referring, yet each distinct and in its place. To me, every hour of the light and dark is a miracle. Every cubic inch of space is a miracle. Every square yard of the surface of the earth is spread with the same. Every foot of the interior swarms with the same. To me, the sea is a continual miracle. The fishes that swim, the rocks, the motion of the waves, the ships with men in them, what stranger miracles are there? Crossing Brooklyn Ferry by Walt Whitman. Flood tide below me, I see you face to face. Clouds of the west, sun there half an hour high, I also see you face to face. Crowds of men and women attired in the usual costumes. How curious you are to me. On the ferry boats, the hundreds and hundreds that cross, returning home, are more curious to me than you suppose. And that you shall cross from shore to shore, years hence so more to me, and more in my meditations than you might suppose. My name's Romy Smith. I'm a poet and a playwright based in the north of England in a city called Leeds and for this short extract of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass I'm taking you through some woodlands which I'm very fond of and you can hear the sound of bird song and also what you can't see but I'm going to turn the camera around in a moment is this unfolding path of wild garlic and this extraordinary smell and I felt that this would be the perfect place to share my particular extract of Leaves of Grass because this view, this smell, uh, this olfactory delight was what um, particularly inspired the passage that I want to share with you now. So this bit of greenery has inspired the extract that I want to read to you from the complete poems published by Penguin Classics. It's page 743. On him rise solid growths at the offset the growths of pine and cedar and hemlock and live oak and locust and chestnut and cypress and hickory and lime tree and cottonwood and tulip tree and cactus and wild vine and tamarind and persimmon and tangles as tangled as any cane brake or swamp and forests coated with transparent ice and icicles hanging from the boughs and crackling in the wind and sides and peaks of mountains and pasturage sweet and free a savanna or upland or prairie with flights and songs and screams that answer those of the wild pigeon and high hold and orchard oriole and coot and surf duck and red-shouldered hawk, and fish hawk, and white ibis, and Indian hen, and cat owl, and water pheasant, and quarbird, bird, and peered sheldrake, and blackbird, and mockingbird, and buzzard, and condor, and night heron, 
and eagle. All right, some wonderful readings there as well. And up next, we will be visiting Jersey City, New Jersey to hear from Mega Sood, who is a poet, editor, and blogger. And Mega will be reading O oh, Captain, My Captain. Then we'll travel to East Northport, New York to hear from Douglas G. Sweezy. And Douglas will be reading Poem of the Dead Young Men of Europe the 72nd and 73rd years of these states, and a Boston ballad, the 78th year of these states. Then we'll travel to Bayshore, New York, to see some wonderful drawings from Steve Terror. And his first digital drawing is entitled To You, with a Whitman quote. And his second digital drawing is entitled A Child Said, also with a Whitman quote. And then we will travel to East Meadow, New York to hear from 2019 Walt Whitman Birthplace Association Long Island Poet of the Year, J.R. Turek. Many of you from Long Island will be familiar with J.R. She's a major presence in the Long Island poetry community. And she'll be reading, Who Learns My Lesson Complete? Hello everyone, my name is Megha Sood. I'm a poet, editor, and blogger based in Jersey City, New Jersey. Today I'm going to be reading the poem O oh Captain, My Captain for the Leaves of Grass Walt Whitman Marathon Reading Series. O oh Captain, my captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells are here, the people all exulting. While follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But O oh heart, 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 Oh, the bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. Oh, captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag is flung, for you the bugle trills. For you bouquets and ribboned wreaths, for you the shores are crowding. For you they call the sewing mass, the eager faces turning. Her captain, dear father, this arm beneath your head. It is some dream that I, on the deck you've fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer. His lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm. He has no pulse nor will. The ship is anchored safe and sound, its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip the victor ships comes in with object one. Exult our shores and ring o' bells, but I with mournful tread walk the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. Suddenly, out of its stale and drowsy lair, the lair of slaves, like lightning Europe leapt forth, half startled at itself, its feet upon the ashes and the rags, its hands tight to the throats of kings. O oh, hope! And faith, O oh, aching close of lives, O oh, many a sickened heart, Turn back unto this day, And make yourselves afresh. And you, paid to defile the people, You liars mark, Not for numberless agonies, Murders, lusts, For court thieving in its manifold mean forms, Worming from his simplicity the poor man's wages, for many a promise sworn by royal lips, And broken and laughed at in the breaking, Then in their power not for all these Did the blows strike of personal revenge, Or the heads of the nobles fall, The people scorned by the ferocity of kings. But the sweetness of mercy brewed bitter destruction, And the frightened rulers come back, Each comes in state with his train, hangman, priest and tax-gatherer, soldier, lawyer, jailer, and sycophant. Yet behind all, lo, a shape, vague as the night, draped interminably, head front and form in scarlet folds, whose face and eyes none may see, out of its robes only this, the red robes lifted by the arm, one finger pointed high over the top, 
like the head of a snake appears. Meanwhile, corpses lie in new-made graves, bloody corpses of the young men. The rope of the gibbet hangs heavily. The bullets of princes are flying. The creatures of power laugh aloud. And all these things bear fruits, and they are good. Those corpses of young men, those martyrs that hang from the gibbets, those hearts pierced by the gray lead, cold and motionless as they seem, live elsewhere with unslaughtered vitality. They live in other young men, O oh, kings! They live in brothers, again ready to defy you. They were purified by death. They were taught and exalted. Not a grave of the murdered for freedom, but grows seed for freedom. And it's turn to bear seed, which the winds carry afar and re-sow, and the rains and the snows nourish. Not a disembodied spirit can the weapons of tyrants let loose, but it stalks invisibly over the earth, whispering, counseling, cautioning. Liberty, let others despair of you. I... Never despair of you. Is the house shut? Is the master away? Nevertheless, be ready. Be not weary of watching. He will return soon. His messengers come anon. Clear the way, Jonathan. A way for the president's marshal. Way for the government cannon. Way for the federal foot and dragoons. And the phantoms afterward. I rose this morning early to get betimes in Boston town. Here's a good place at the corner. I must stand and see the show. I love to look on the stars and stripes. I hope the fifes will play Yankee Doodle. How bright shine the foremost with cutlasses. Every man holds his revolver, marching stiff through Boston town. A fog follows. Antiques of the same come limping. Some appear wooden-legged, and some appear bandaged and bloodless. Why, this is a show. It has called the dead out of the earth. The old graveyards of the hills have hurried to see. Uncountable phantoms gather by flank and rear of it. Cocked hats of mothy mold and crutches made of mist. Arms in slings, and old men leaning on young men's shoulders. What troubles you, Yankee phantoms? What is all this chattering of bare gums? Does this og convulse in your limbs? Do you mistake your crutches for firelocks and level them? If you blind your eyes with tears, you will not see the president's marshal. If you groan such groans, you might balk the government cannon. For shame, old maniacs, bring down those tossed arms and let your white hair be. Here, gape your smart grandsons. Their wives gaze at them from the windows. See how well-dressed. See how orderly they conduct themselves. Worse and worse. Can you stand it? Are you retreating? Is this hour with the living too dead for you? Retreat, then. Pell-mell, back to the hills, old limpers. I do not think you belong here anyhow. But there is one thing that belongs here. Shall I tell you what it is, gentlemen of Boston? I will whisper it to the mayor. He shall send a committee to England. They shall get a grant from Parliament and go with a cart to the royal vault. Dig out King George's coffin. Unwrap him quick from the grave clothes. Box up his bones for a journey. Find a swift Yankee clipper. Here is freight for you. Black-bellied clipper, up with your anchor. Shake out your sails. Steer straight toward Boston Bay. Now call the President's Marshal again, and bring out the government cannon, and fetch home the roarers from Congress, and make another procession, and guard it with foot and dragoons. Here is a centerpiece for them. Look, all orderly citizens. Look from the windows, women. The committee opened the box and set up the regal ribs and glue those that will not stay and clap the skull on top of the ribs and clap a crown on top of the skull. You have got your revenge, old buster. 
The crown is come to its own and more than its own. Stick your hands in your pockets, Jonathan. You are a made man from this day. You are mighty cute. And here is one of your bargains. <laughs> Hi, I'm J.R. Turek. Happy 202nd birthday, Walt Whitman, and thank you for Leaves of Grass. Who learns my lesson complete? Who learns my lesson complete? Boss and journeyman and apprentice, churchman and atheist, the stupid and the wise thinker, parents and offspring, merchant and clerk and porter and customer, editor, author, artist, and schoolboy? Draw nigh and commence. It is no lesson. It lets down the bars to a good lesson, and that to another, and every one to another still. The great laws take and effuse without argument. I am the same style, for I am their friend. I love them, quits and quits. I do not halt and make salams. I lie abstracted and hear beautiful tales of things and the reason of things. They are so beautiful, I nudge myself to listen. I cannot say to another person what I hear. I cannot say it to myself. It is very wonderful. It is no little matter, this round and delicious globe, moving so exactly in its orbit forever and ever, without one jolt or the untruth of a single second. I do not think it was made in six days, nor in ten thousand years, nor ten decillions of years, nor planned and built one thing after another as an architect plans and builds a house. I do not think seventy years is the time of a man or woman, nor that seventy millions of years is the time of a man or woman, not that years will ever stop the existence of me or anyone else. It is wonderful that I should be immortal. As everyone is immortal, I know it is wonderful, but my eyesight is equally wonderful, and how I was conceived in my mother's womb is equally wonderful, and how I was not palpable once, but am now, and was born on the last day of May, 1819, and passed from a babe in the creeping trance of three summers and three winters to articulate and walk are all equally wonderful, and that I grew six feet high, and that I have become a man thirty-six years old in 1855, and that I am here, anyhow, all are equally wonderful, and that my soul embraces you this hour, and we affect each other without ever seeing each other, and never perhaps to see each other is every bit as wonderful." and that I can think such thoughts as these is just as wonderful, and that I can remind you, and you think them and know them to be true, is just as wonderful, and that the moon spins round the earth and on with the earth in equal wonderful, and that they balance themselves with the sun and stars is equally wonderful. Come, I should like to hear you tell me what there is in yourself that is not just as wonderful. And I should like to hear the name of anything between Sunday morning and Saturday night that is not just as wonderful. Thank you, Walt. All right, and we are sadly coming to the end of our submissions here. That's such a wonderful journey but we have three more places to visit. First, we'll visit the Upper West Side of Manhattan, New York City, where Isabella Wagner Khaleesi has contributed a digital printed image called What is the Grass from Song of Myself, Section 6. And then we'll visit Albuquerque, New Mexico, the Church of Beethoven, where Walt Whitman birthplace writer and resident George Wallace did a reading of Whitman and I will also want to mention George Wallace has a wonderful reading of his own poetry on our YouTube as well. 
So you definitely want to check that out. And then we will uh, travel to England to see Stuart Williamson's bronze sculpture. Uh, the first bronze sculpture is actually with a client in Michigan. And a copy of the bronze sculpture is at the Selmagundi Club in Manhattan. All right, let's check those out. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, George Wallace. Thank you. I was told I had strict instructions that I had uh, 10 minutes, but eight minutes if I say hello. <laughs> I'll take the risk of uh, do two minutes of hello. It's a pleasure to be here representing the World Women's Birthplace in uh, New York, here in uh, beautiful downtown Albuquerque, where it's nice and warm in one building in New Mexico. <laughs> I understand that now that they have all of the snow melted off of uh, the Super Bowl, they're going to restore gas to New Mexico. <laughs> I could be wrong. Uh, I have uh, two poems I'm going to read to you from uh, Walt Whitman's uh, work. And uh, what a pleasure it is that I don't have to be triple jointed, suffer from a rare medical condition, and to pack with the devil's <laughs> All women who said, this is what you shall do. Love the earth and sun and the animals, despise riches, give alms to everyone that asks. Stand up for the stupid and crazy. Devote your income and labor to others. Hate tyrants, argue not concerning God. Have patience and indulgence towards the people. I have two poems for you. The first one is called Miracles. I want to make sure everybody sees me. <laughs> Miracles. Why? Who makes much of a miracle? As to me, I know of nothing else but miracles. Whether I walk the streets of Manhattan or dart my sight over the roofs of houses toward the sky, or wade with naked feet along the beach just on the edge of the water, or stand under the trees in the woods, or talk by day with anyone I love, or sleep in the bed at night with anyone I love or sit at dinner at table with my mother, or look at strangers opposite me riding in the car, or watch honeybees busy around the hive of a summer afternoon, or animals feeding in the fields, or birds, or stars shining so quiet and bright, or the exquisite, delicate, thin curve of the new moon in spring. Whether I go among those I like the best, and that I like me the best, mechanics, boatmen, farmers, or among the savants, or to the soiree, or to the opera, or stand a long while looking at the movements of machinery, or behold children in their sports, or the admirable sight of the perfect old man, or the perfect old woman, or the sick in hospitals, or the dead carried to burial, or my own eyes, and figure in the glass. These, with the rest, one and all, are to me miracles. The whole referring, yet it's distinct in its place. To me, every hour of the light and dark is a miracle. Every cubic inch of space, a miracle. Every square yard of the surface of the earth is spread with the same. Every foot of the interior swarms with the same. Every spear of grass, the frames, limbs, organs of men and women, and all that concerns them. All these to me are unspeakably perfect miracles. To me, the sea. Is a continual miracle. The fishes that swim, the rocks, the motion of the waves, the ships with men in them. What stranger miracles are there? And this for Walt Whitman's little moment. What do you see, Walt Whitman? I see all the menials of the earth laboring. I see all the prisoners in the prisons. I see the defective human bodies of the earth. Blind, deaf, and dumb, idiots, hunchbacks, lunatics, pirates, thieves, betrayers, murderers, slave makers, the earth, the helpless infants, and the helpless old men and women. I see male and female everywhere. I see the serene brotherhood of philosophers. I see ranks, colors, barbarisms, civilizations. I go among them. I mix indiscriminately, and I salute all the inhabitants of the earth. You, whoever you are. All you continentals of Asia, Africa, Europe, Australia, indifferent of place. All of you are the numberless islands of the archipelagos of the sea, and you of centuries hence, when you listen to me, and you each and everywhere whom I specify not, but include just the same health to you. 
goodwill to you all from me and America sent. Each of us inevitable, each of us limitless, each of us with his or her right upon the earth, each of us allowed the eternal purports of the earth, each of us here as divinely as any is here. Toward you all in America's name, I raise high the perpendicular hand. I also want to mention that today, Monday, May 31st, 2021, is a very special day as it is both Walt's birthday and Memorial Day here in the U.S. Walt Whitman sat at the bedside of thousands of wounded Civil War soldiers and brought them small comforting gifts such as candy and tobacco. He listened to their stories and wrote letters home to soldiers' families. Sometimes these would be the last letters that families would receive from their loved ones. Today we honor not only Walt Whitman, but all the soldiers that risked or sacrificed their lives for their country. And I wanted to read to you from a poem titled Ashes of Soldiers that Whitman wrote as an elegy for Civil War soldiers. Dearest comrades, all is over and long gone, but love is not over. And what love, comrades? Perfume from the battlefields rising up, from the fodder arising, for the ashes of all dead soldiers, south or north. And I want to personally thank everyone who contributed to this wonderful Whitmanic celebration and journey that we went on here today for Walt's 202nd birthday. And I want to thank everyone who donates. It means so much to us that you support events just like this. And I also want to thank everyone who subscribes to our YouTube or finds us on social media or both today. I hope that we can connect more with you in the future and see you soon at our live Zoom events. And I want to leave you with a reading by Walt Whitman personator Daryl Blaine Ford. And he's reading Poets to Come. And after that, you'll see a picture of the youngest known photo of Walt Whitman and the oldest known photo of Walt Whitman. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. And happy 202nd birthday from all of us at Walt Whitman Birthplace Association. Happy birthday, Walt. Poets to come, poets to come, orators, singers, musicians to come. Not today is to justify me and answer what I am for, but you, a new brood, native, athletic, continental, greater than before known. Arouse, you must justify me. I myself but write one or two indicative words for the future. I but advance a moment only to wheel and hurry back to the darkness. I am a man who, sauntering along without fully stopping, turns a casual look upon you and then averts his face, leaving to you to prove and define it, expecting the main things from you.